These are circles. No, really, they are. So maybe we should ask, what exactly is a circle? If you had to describe a circle, what would you say? Maybe one of the answers you might give is the set of all pairs x, y of the form x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Or maybe you describe how you draw a circle. For example, maybe you stick a peg in a piece of paper, you attach it to a string, and you attach the other end to a pencil, and then you keep that string taut and twirl it around, and then you get a circle. I claim that both of these ideas are about distance. So I'm going to define a circle to be a set of points that are equidistant from a central point. But hold up, a distance isn't so obvious to calculate. For example, if you're driving in your car, we can't always take the straight line path between two points. We have to follow the road. While that might seem like a trivial observation, that certainly matters for your wallet when you're paying for gas. Your odometer doesn't care about the straight line distance, it only cares about the distance along the road. So that begs the question, what is distance? I'm going to define distance to be a function, d of a, b, where a and b are points, and it's always going to be non-negative. So d of a, b, you can read as the distance from a to b, and we should never have a negative distance. And we also want a few properties. So for example, we want the distance between two different points to be positive, because if we traveled no distance, then we should be at the same point. Secondly, the distance from A to B should be the same as from B to A. And thirdly, the distance from A to B should be shorter than stopping at any C first. So the straight line distance from A to B should be at most as large as the distance from A to C and then from C to B. So these properties define a distance or what we call a metric. Mathematicians like to formalize this and they give the following definition. A metric space is a pair xd, where x is a non-empty set and d is a function that takes in two points in x and gives a non-negative real number, such that for all x, y, and z, so for any three points, we have that the distance between x and y is zero if and only if x equals y. So that's our first observation, that's the first property that we wanted. Two. The distance from x to y should be the distance from y to x. And three, the distance from x to y should be less than or equal to the distance from x to z plus the distance from z to y. So this last property is called the triangle inequality. The second property is called symmetry. And the first property is called positive definiteness. Okay, so let's see some examples. So we usually calculate the distance via the Pythagorean theorem. So if I take two points on the plane, let's call them x1, y1, and x2, y2, then we can draw a straight line between them, and we can form this right angle triangle. And the side lengths are going to be x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. So an easy application of the Pythagorean theorem says that the distance, and I'm going to give it a d subscript 2 for reasons that you'll see soon, between those two points is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. With this distance, we can define a circle of radius r centered at 0, 0 to be the set of all x, y, such that the distance between x, y to 0, 0 is r, or that's the same thing as the square root of x squared plus y squared is r, or we can rewrite that as x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So this is our usual circle that you would expect. Okay, but what about our car distance? So let's suppose that we can only travel north-south and east-west on the plane. So we can't go diagonally. So then between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, we can only travel in these straight orthogonal lines. One such way would be going straight east in this case, and then straight north. We travel x2 minus x1 east, and y2 minus y1 north. And actually, you can see that no matter which other shortest path we take with this condition, we get the exact same distance. So in particular, the distance, I'm going to call it d sub 1, between x1, y1, and x2, y2, is the absolute value of x2 minus x1, plus the absolute value of y2 minus y1. 
Okay, so what does a circle look like with this distance? Well, again, it's all the points that are equidistant from 0, 0. And in this case, we get the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y equals r, which is this diamond shape. And I encourage you to check this for yourself, for example, on a graphing calculator. Okay, I want to make a slight generalization here. So why am I calling it D1 and D2? Well, notice that D1 has this pattern. I can raise those to the exponent 1. And D2 has this pattern. So the square root is actually just the power of 1 over 2. And I have these squares inside. So maybe we can change that for any P. And in fact, we do have a distance, a DP, that I just change that exponent. Instead of 1 and 2, I have P instead. So the d sub p between two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is the sum of the absolute values of x2 minus x1 to the power p, plus y2 minus y1 in absolute value to the power p, and all of that to the power of 1 over p. So we're taking the pth root of that sum. Okay, well, if p is between 1 and 2, then the circle kind of just looks like a fatter diamond. And if p is larger than 2, then the circle kind of looks like a rounded square. And in fact, we can let p go to infinity, and we do have a d sub infinity. And the circle that we get is actually a square. So I'll leave you on one thing to think about. Can you guess the rule for calculating distance in this space with this d infinity that gives us a circle that's exactly like a square? There is a relatively nice rule for it. These distance functions aren't just curiosities. Actually, mathematicians actively study distances like this. And this is just a short little introduction to metric spaces, one of my favorite structures to study. In my mind, these metric spaces make good sense out of things like convergence and continuity and form a strong basis for studying fields like topology. So I encourage you to explore to your heart's content, as there's lots of surprising and unintuitive spaces to dive into. I tend to think that the definition of a metric space is fairly intuitive, but maybe that third property, the triangle inequality, causes some consternation. If you'd like to see more about that, check out my video on the triangle inequality here.